Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I've got a brand new article from Daily Haddle. Brand Sprankin. Sprankin? Sprankin's not a word. Come on, Moon Lambo. You know what? I'm not even going to edit that out. I'm going to keep rolling with it. Brand Spankin' new article from Daily Haddle, hot off the press, which really just means it was published to a website. It's titled, Why is XRP's price lagging in 2019? Ripple CEO says regulators may be to blame. And I would also say it's an arbitrarily chosen timeline. You can paint a narrative depending on what timeline you're looking at in terms of price action for any cryptocurrency. Now how you gonna act? So I'm gonna talk about that. I got a couple tweets from the XRP community and then I'm gonna wrap up this video with a, uh, another piece from Daily Hodl. This one's titled, NASDAQ lists crypto index designed to eliminate fake volumes. And this definitely caught my attention because the concept of uh, fake volume has certainly been the, in the limelight over the last few months. Uh, Ripple put it there, frankly. Uh, they don't like the way in which uh, this type of data, the volume of cryptocurrency, specifically XRP, they don't like the way in which it's being, uh, you know, in which it's being compiled. A lot of it is fake, fake, and that that makes it hard to. Man, I'm having tough. Did I say fake? A lot of it is fake. F A K E. Oh my God. F A K E. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, guys. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, uh, so w what they've been doing is tr trying to find ways to, to measurably, um, you know, just compile that data, the, the reported data in terms of volume. And it's very important because as it pertains to Ripple and the sales of XRP, they want the sale of, this, of, of their XRP holdings to only be a per certain percentage of volume. But uh, before we get going here, if you would please delicately tap that like button. And if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. It's, uh, it's how I determine my self-worth as a human being. Let's dig into this first piece. Now, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse says a lack of crypto clarity from U.S. regulators may have kept the price of XRP from rising this year. When asked why XRP is lagging compared to the rest of the crypto market, Garlinghouse tells Fox Business that regulators could be playing a role. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has declared that Bitcoin is not a security, and officials at the SEC have also said Ethereum is likely not a security under U.S. laws. But so far, the agency has been quiet about XRP. Uh, and that is indeed true. The SEC has been rather quiet about XRP, but I pointed this out recently, too. There was another cryptocurrency. It was an ICO. Uh, I could be wrong. It was like Telegram or something like that. Now I forget. I reported on it, but now I, the name seems to escape me. But uh, they, they raised, if it's the one I'm thinking of, several billion dollars. Ended up getting fined something like $24 million. It was something like that. But, uh, you know, so they're coming down on certain projects. That's one example. But they're not coming down on XRP. And in the world of crypto, fine. Most people on the planet don't know about XRP. They don't know what the hell it is. Fine. Which is why I'm happy to be invested early. But uh, even so, uh, while most people on the planet don't know what it is, in the world of crypto, XRP is very well known. I think it's quite fair to say that. It's in the limelight, at least in the world of crypto. And if there were something terrible going on if ripple were actually selling a security and given that the company's been around for seven years do you think the sec would have let this go on for seven years so fine they haven't stated something explicitly about xrp i don't know why i, I don't have uh, friends in high places that can firmly answer that question but clearly to me no action is going to be taken i would be astounded if the SEC were to declare XRP a security because, well, frankly, it's not. <laughs> right. Now, check out this quote from Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO. I think it's lagged maybe, in part, because the U.S. government has provided clarity about Bitcoin. They provided clarity about Ether. But then they've remained silent about the third most valued digital asset, NexRP. Regulators have a hard problem. These are new technologies, and I think there's work to be done there. But I think globally, it's been more positive. The UK government has been clear around their designation of XRP as not a security and more of a utility token. The Japanese government has been clear. The Singaporean government as well. So I think the macro trend line is very positive here. But I do think the US can continue to spend time on this and provide leadership. And so I, I will say this. If the SEC were to declare XRP not a security, that would be a positive to whatever degree that would help. But I, I, I want to state that I don't believe that 
uh, in terms of price action, I don't know, um, and I don't think that even Brad Garlinghouse stated, I don't think that he firmly believes the reason XRP price is what it is, is explicitly because of this. He's just saying, hey, here's something that may be a factor. That's the way I'm reading it anyway. And so I think that's a fair point, perfectly fair point. But uh, I, I just, I think the reason that XRP price is what it is, is because there's plenty of good news. You're like, what the hell do you mean by that, Moon Lambo? I'm saying that if there weren't real adoption, I'm saying that if there weren't constant good news, the price would be notably lower than it is now. It wouldn't necessarily even be in the top 10 of cryptocurrencies, okay? So, uh, look, I get it. People wish the price was higher. Hey, look, I'm investing in XRP, do That would be super duper. But it's just a simple supply and demand thing. And I'm, what I'm saying is that people are, are, are treating XRP differently it is second to second to xlm it is the least correlated cryptocurrency out of out of the top 10 in, in terms of uh, price action relative to bitcoin that means something there is a reason for this indeed so is is this a factor to some degree yeah well i'm sure that there are people out there that would feel that much more confident there are people if they're sitting on the sideline or purchase less xrp because they're really not that sure I think it's fair to say that it could, it could have an effect. Yeah, that's perfectly reasonable. I just don't think that it's the huge... Because if you look, if you take a look over the last however many years, you can see it's very crystal clear that XRP continues to move in tandem with the price action of Bitcoin. So to what degree would it be a smidge higher? I don't know. But it's still moving with Bitcoin. And that, to, to me, that's not even disputable. And uh, Brad Garlinghouse has said that too. So that's why, again, I think that it's fair what he said. But the, the, the biggest reason, the, the, the asset class just hasn't figured this stuff out. Speculators investing in this asset class have not figured stuff out. That's the biggest reason. There's a frenzy around this and people don't know, uh, you know where everything's going to land in the end. Anyway, peace continues. Garlinghouse also addresses concerns about Ripple's monthly release of 1 billion XRP from escrow. He says Ripple sells a small fraction of the 55 billion XRP it owns each month, and the escrow process is designed to assure investors that Ripple can't and won't sell a bunch of its holdings all at once. <clears throat> now, here's another quote from Brad Garlinghouse. About three years ago, we set up escrow contracts, 55 of them. So we put 55 billion units of XRP into the escrow contracts. Every month, one of them becomes unlocked, and at the end of that month, we put some of that back into escrow. We don't actually sell a billion, just to be clear. There's a billion released every month. The vast, vast, uh, 80 to 90% of that goes back into the 56th month and the 57th month. We did this because there was a perception that Ripple could, because we own a lot of XRP, cause pressure on the market. That wouldn't be in our own self-interest, but that risk existed hypothetically. We decided to remove that as a concern from the community by simply saying, we're going to lock these up into contracts and they're going to be cryptographically signed such that we can't sell them. There are 100 billion units of XRP that have been created. There will never be any more. So from a dilution of the market, uh, there won't be any more. From an introduction of supply that's kind of locked up, we want to make sure it's a constructive healthy market engagement and indeed they have as i keep saying over and over and over again in case you hadn't heard it let me tell you they ripple first of all they're reducing they have reduced we're looking we're waiting for the third quarter uh, market report from ripple but they have stated that sale their sales of xrp were down dramatically in quarter three compared to uh, quarter two which is fine because they've adjusted they've looked at, at volume and they said okay we want our sales to be a certain percentage of volume and once you take the fake volume out of uh, the consideration which is what unfortunately they're looking at previously with the likes of coin market cap and so on and so forth uh, well they saw that and they're like okay it's time to make a little bit of an adjustment and they did super duper and i'm really looking forward to seeing that report from them all right next tweet here and this is from uh actually there is let me go back here i saw this it's from ripple but i first saw it from xrp research center who retweeted it an XRP Research Center wrote, <clears throat> The CEO of MoneyGram will be at Swell talking about how XRP can help them to reduce their negative working capital thanks to ODL, that's on-demand liquidity, and pre-funding elimination. I hope there are a ton of videos from Swell. I just, I really hope. And I'm extra excited that there are, as I mentioned in my last video, uh, at least a few, at least a few uh, people from the XRP community that have been invited by Ripple that'll be able to report on this. So whatever they're able to put out, whatever Ripple allows them, if they if they allow them to record anything, that would be incredible. But e even if they can't record something at the event, it would be. It's, I'm just really looking forward to hearing back uh, what our what my fellow XRP YouTubers and community members have to say is going on there. All right, next, this is kind of like a public service announcement. You know, for, like I just I want to get the concept out there. 
This is a tweet from Kevin Cage, my fellow XRP YouTuber. He's got an awesome channel. And he wrote, OMG, why do people fall for these fake scams of these fake Twitter profiles pretending to be me? Check the Twitter handle and confirm it is me. I will never ask you to send crypto. Do your own research. Please be smart, people. And he has this image here. So I guess this was presumably... Um, was this a direct message on, on Twitter, I'm guessing? I think that's what it looks like. I don't know. Whatever. Here's, here's a message back and forth. So somebody sending a message to Kevin Cage. Kevin, I took your advice from a tweet I got the other day. Seventh anniversary XRP giveaway. Brad Garlinghouse, 10-14-2019. I sent XRP off two days ago and haven't heard anything back. Did I mess up? If so, is there any recourse? And Kevin responded, that is a scam. I tell everyone that. That was a fake Twitter profile. Never send your crypto to anyone and expect more in return. And then in response to that, the person who got scammed wrote, wow, damn, any way to get that back? And Kevin said, no. And I feel for people to get scammed. I mean, it's, I just, it seems like a stupid thing to fall for. I get it, but I'm, I am sympathetic. <laughs> people can get tricked sometimes. We've all been tricked in our lives for one reason or another, and you can feel stupid when that happens. I've never done anything like this personally, <laughs> you know, um, but, uh, I want to state this because this has been happening. There, anytime you have even just a, a small channel like mine, I, I mean, small, it's all relative. So I have a little over 11,000 subscribers. Even at this level, what I'm saying is that people are already pretending to be me and sending emails out pretending to, pretending that they're Moon Lambo. That's already happening. So I just want to tell you right now because it kind of is like heartbreaking to see this type of thing. I, I do not like scammers. I don't like seeing people get scammed. I just want to be clear. I will. Ne I've never emailed anybody about anything, and I'm not going to. I have no intentions at this point of using any of my email addresses to contact anybody. If you want to contact me, I love hearing from you in the comments below, and I love conversing on Twitter. And if you talk to me on Twitter, please make sure it is my real Twitter handle at MoonLamboIO. That's it at MoonLamboIO. If that ever changes for some strange reason, I'll be sure to let you know. But make sure that's it. If you, and I, there's, I'm never going to do some sort of giveaway or anything like this. Ever, 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 don't fall for this. Do not be scammed. And you're going to see this from other um, XRP YouTubers that they're just getting impersonated. So it's not just about me. It happened to Kevin Cage. It's happened to Digital Asset Investor. It's happened to Alex Cobb. It's, just name your XRP YouTuber. It's happened. Just be very cognizant of this. There are scammers out there, and they want your XRP. They want to take it. Don't fall for it. So anyway, just a public service announcement. I don't talk about that too frequently, but I have in the past, but not too frequently. And this just I just saw this, and I thought, okay, it's, it's time to just... Really quickly talk about that. Last piece here. NASDAQ lists crypto index designed to eliminate fake volumes. The world's second largest stock exchange, NASDAQ, has listed a new cryptocurrency index that's designed to eradicate fake trading volumes. Created by Crypto Index on May of 2017, the CIX100 index tracks the 100 best performing cryptocurrencies by pulling data from nine top exchanges. The index is up 1,097% since its launch date. According to the company's announcement on Facebook, the CryptoIndex.com team is honored to be listed on NASDAQ, which has always been a key platform for institutional investors to monitor traditional indices. Now it's time for a cryptocurrency one. Crypto Index's methodology meets the needs and requirements of heavily regulated asset managers plus institutional and professional investors. And the company, company notes, Crypto Index 100 is a digital expression of the top 100 coins that rebalances itself continuously as the cryptocurrency market ebbs and flows. Rebalancing of the Crypto Index 100 happens monthly, and the data is streamed from the exchange APIs taking all trades for each particular coin which I think is very cool stuff here. And then they list the uh, CX100 API integration and then the exchanges there. Uh, clean, reliable crypto data continues to address allegations detailed earlier this year by Bitwise Asset Management that 95% of unregulated crypto exchanges pump up figures and fudge activity spitting out fake data. And that is a very serious problem, especially if you're an entity like Ripple, who does happen to have a substantial quantity of a cryptocurrency, in this case XRP, and you want to sell it responsibly without cratering the market. Stuff like that actually matters. So uh, anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That will be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau!